Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Owen. Thank you, Maria, and thank you, Bradley. Amen. Wow, the Lord is the Lord is good. Amen. Um, if uh, please allow me to be bold enough to say that if you are sitting here this morning and you cannot see and hear that the Lord is moving in our church, you are deaf and blind. <laughs> really. <laughs> Um, and I'm saying it in a very nice way. The Lord is, the, the Lord's busy healing. The Lord is moving. Um, I, I think the biggest thing that, that as, as a family in Christ that we have uh, learned and, and started to grow in is uh, obedience. Amen. If the Lord tells us to do something, be, be obedient. Um, and and the, the Bible teaches us that we are, when we do something uh, concerning the word of God, uh, that is fitting uh, for the, the, the gospel and the word of God. We are to commend ourselves, but we are also to commend each other. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I want to commend someone sitting here this morning. And I just want to draw everyone's attention to this. Yeah. Yeah. Look yeah. How this yeah. one, of our, one of our mommies in our, in our church, Mom Valerie. And uh, she does this every single week, faithfully, faithfully. And she treats this as if it's one of her children. Amen. Amen. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Always, always, always be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Doesn't matter how it sounds to us as humans, always be obedient. If you wake up Monday morning and you feel that you have to take an extra large delicious, nutritious <laughs> chocolate cake to the pastor's house, just do that. <laughs> um, and just to be sure that you heard right, take two. <laughs> Amen. Let us, uh, before we get into the word, let's open in prayer, please. <clears throat> Father God, this morning, Lord, we are going to go through your powerful, beautiful, everlasting word, Lord. And, and one thing that has manifested in this beautiful church of ours this morning, Lord, is joy. The joy of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for that, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your heart towards us. We thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, maybe I'm speaking only for myself this morning, but thank you for your patience towards us, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that there are so many times that you ask us and request us and, and, and lead us and guide us to do and say something. And, and, and for whatever reason, unknown to man, Lord, we decide it's not the right time, it's not the right words, it's not the right people, not the right whatever it is, Lord. But yet, Lord Jesus, just, just like your disciples rejected you when you were hanging on that cross, Lord. When you rose from the dead, you appeared to, to them again, and you were so kind to them, Lord. You did not shun them one side because they rejected you. Lord, you pulled them closer, and you gave them a purpose in life. And that, Lord, is why we love you, because we find our purpose in you, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. As we get into your word this morning, may the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ do his perfect work in our lives. And just take the word and, and cause it to come alive, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of, of the Lord. We pray and we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, so, I, I am I'm overly excited about the, the men's ministry that is starting. Um, I think the Lord is going to do something powerful. Amen. amen. Um, and it is going to be a time of rejoicing. Um, so the men that are going to come here Tuesday nights, we are going to rejoice in, in what the Lord is, is leading us to do and what the Lord is, is uh, doing uh, in our spiritual lives. And the daughters that are left home are going to rejoice because they've got some time off. <laughs> Amen. So, so it's going to be a time of, of rejoicing. This morning, um, you will see on the, the notice, and, and this is how the Lord works, and he may and he can because he's God. Amen. So on the notice, I, I said there that the, um, the message for this morning was, was uh, yeah, strong, stronger than before. Okay. So that, that, 
Um, last night, close to 10 o'clock, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> close to 10 o'clock, um, the Lord comes and says, this is what my people have to hear right now. So, this morning, we are starting with a three-part series. Okay? And we are starting it based on this scripture. Um, please, Isaac. Um, 1 Corinthians 13. Hey, the, 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 the chapter of love. Amen? The chapter of love. For, for those who don't know, this scripture is the single scripture above John 3.16. This scripture is the one scripture that has been read um, the most in the world, ever. Almost at every wedding. 80% of the weddings, this scripture is read. So we are going to focus on something that, the Paul, that Paul is giving the church here this, this morning. And the Lord is going to break it open for us. So um, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. We are, we're going to open that, that up this morning. The Bible says, And now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So we are going to start with a three-part series. This morning we are going to start with faith. What is biblical faith? Biblical faith. You get, you get other types of faith. We, we're going to go through it now. Go through the Word of God. The Bible is so beautiful in, in, in explaining to us the difference between kingdom, Jesus' kingdom, and worldly kingdom. Amen? Amen. So you get Jesus' faith and you get world faith. You get Jesus' hope and you get world hope. You get Jesus' love and you get world love. Okay. And, and there's, a, there's a, a huge difference between the, the two of them. So um, I want to start off this morning by, by sharing with everyone what faith is not. Not. So that we can get that settled in our minds, especially in our minds, so that we know moving forward together as the body of Christ, I, I know when this comes up, that's not faith. Amen? Be, because sometimes we are, um, you know, through, through false teachings in, in the past, we, we receive a certain picture about what faith is, and then we tend to, to move in that direction. And we're going to take it out of the Word of God this morning, so it's no human opinion uh, the, this morning. So the very first scripture that we're going to look at is in the book of John. John 8 from verse 31 to 41. Okay. The very first thing that faith is not is religious heritage. That's not faith. Okay. Because I belong to a certain religion doesn't give me Jesus faith. Amen? And we're going to see in the Word of God now, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had religious heritage. But they didn't have Jesus' faith. None of them could, could perform miracles. None of them could heal. But they had religious faith. We, we're going to see in the book of John 8 uh, from verse 31. The Bible says here, to the Jews, this, this Jews here, from uh, Greek to English, uh, means the uh, religious Jewish leaders, so the Pharisees, okay? So, to the Jews who had believed in him, at this stage Jesus was preaching, and, and certain Pharisees started listening to him. We can see in the beginning of the book of John, Nicodemus, amen? So, he, he was a Pharisee, and, and at night he came to Jesus, asked him all these questions, and then came to salvation for a fear of the, the other Pharisees killing him. So he kept his, his discipleship under, under wraps. Until Jesus was uh, crucified, um, he took the body of Jesus and, and buried it because he was a very wealthy man. So, to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know that the truth um, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, 
I am the life. There's only one truth. Amen? That's Jesus. Then the word of God goes on, verse 33. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Listen what they're saying to the Lord. We belong to a religious club. That's what they're saying. And, and we are very religious. We are, we are keeping to every law and regulation. Okay? And the Bible says that Jesus didn't come to, to, to break the law, to abolish the law. He came to, to um, fulfill it. He came to fulfill the law through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Um, so, so here, and then it goes further, verse 34. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants. That was nothing new to the Lord. The Lord knew that. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. You have no room for me. I am telling you um, what I have seen in the Father's presence and you are doing what you have seen from your Father. Sure. And then the Lord goes further in a different scripture and he says, you know what, you're actually following your Father. Your father that when he speaks, he speaks his native language of lying. And your father is Satan. You're following him. Because you want to kill the, the son of God. So the very first thing that we've seen here now is that religious heritage, what I inherited from my parents, doesn't give me faith. Amen? Amen. It, it, it did not make me a... a Born again, blood washed, Holy Spirit filled, Bible believing, God fearing, water walking, faith healing, disciple of Jesus, because I went to church with my parents when I was a child. Amen. They didn't do that. So, the first thing is religious heritage is not faith. The second thing, Romans 9, Romans 9, uh, from verse 31 to 32. Indoctrination, clever teachings, does not give me faith. Amen? The Pharisees and the Sadducees were indoctrinated to the full. They knew the word of God from, from uh, Genesis to Malachi. Almost word for word, they knew it. But it didn't give them faith. Amen? So by teaching a certain Church doctrine does not give us faith. It doesn't. And we're going to see it in the, in, in the word now. Romans 9 from verse 31. But the people of Israel who pursued the law as the way of righteousness have not attained their goal. Why not? Because they pursued it not by faith, but if it was by works. Amen? Amen. So the book of James even teaches us that, that if you don't have faith, okay, uh, um, faith without works is, is useless. Faith without deeds is useless. Amen? And there's a scripture that goes further that says, what does it help my brother or my sister that is hungry, that comes to me and says, please, I am hungry. What will it help them if I, if I pray for them and I say to them, um, go and be well fed. But I do nothing about their physical need. Amen. Amen? Amen? That's what the body of Christ is there for. Amen? If my stomach is hungry, my hand must feed my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, that, it's plain and simple. So, um, by, by indoctrinating ourselves, it, it doesn't give us faith. Because I can have as much biblical knowledge as I yeah. want. Yeah. But if one of God's people comes to me and needs a gift of the Holy Spirit, I can't give it to them because my, my mind is above my, my spirit. Is, is, is that okay with everyone? Thank you. Then the next one, John 3, 
John 3. This is a this is a hard one. This is one that a lot of a lot of people don't want to hear, especially people in in the world that haven't come to salvation yet. Hey, they don't want to hear this one. John 3, verse 19. Sorry, I'm just looking at yeah. John 3, verse 19. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. So this is another thing that is not faith. Comfort isn't faith. To be comfortable isn't to have faith. Amen? To say to myself, I just want to go to church on a Sunday and I just want to sit still. I don't want to talk to anyone. I, I, I don't want to lift my hands in worship. I, I, if, if, uh, if someone asks, uh, can we please have volunteers for the, I don't want to volunteer. No, I just want to, I just want, I want to be comfortable. I just want to sit. Amen? So comfort is not faith. Because many times we think, you know, I can serve the Lord on my own. I'll, 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 I'll come to church, I'll sit, I'll, I'll, I'll be one side, and then I'll go home and I'll, I'll serve him there. I, I, I don't need, but that goes against what the word of God teaches us about the body of Christ. Amen? And we are to get together, and when we get together, one has a word of encouragement, one has a, a, a worship song, one, one has a, a word of wisdom, um, one prophesies, one uh, speaks in tongues, one lays out tongues. Amen? Amen. So, so I can't do that alone. It's not biblical. Amen. I can't. Because the gift that I did not receive, you are sitting yes. with it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? And that's why when the body of Christ comes together and unites in the Holy Spirit, we are, we're going to see it in the Word of God now. We are so powerful, there's nothing that can stop us. Amen. And I'm not saying that out of arrogance. I'm saying it out of biblical confidence. Amen. Amen? So the first thing is faith is not religious heritage. It's not what I inherited from my parents. Faith is not to indoctrinate myself with all sorts of teachings, biblical teachings. Okay, Biblical teachings is good Amen. if I am walking in the Holy Spirit, Amen. because then when the Holy Spirit leads me to do something, it confirms that biblical teaching in me. Amen? Amen. Then, um, faith is not being comfortable, sitting comfortable. Anyone that has served the Lord for, for some time, we'll know that Jesus loves to take us out of our comfort zone, yes. like completely out. Amen? Yeah. Completely. Like I, I, I'd been in the, in the ministry for, what was it? 18 years or something. I, I had never ministered to ladies, to, to, to God's daughters, never. Because coming to salvation, I had a magnificent fear for women. Really, I, I couldn't. I couldn't speak to that. My wife is the first lady that I could speak to, and and that I could be close to. And but other than that, I I was it, shaking, and my mouth was dry. I couldn't speak. So it, it was it was rough. And then, after eighteen years, we were presenting a, a, a seminar called How to Hear the Voice of God, and and out of the whole church. Only God's daughters pitched. Only God's daughters. And, and, and I'm going to tell you why. Because we as men, you can go through the word of God and see that's true as well. We as men were created to be physical beings, analytical and logical beings. Okay? We look at something and, 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 we, and we try and pan it out. How was this possible that this happened? Okay, let's, let, let's see how the, it was. And we try and work it out. Okay. Ladies, okay, because they work with men and they work with uh, children, were created to be emotional beings. So a daughter of God can connect ten times quicker to the heart of Father God than a man can. For sure, straight. I've seen it. So when I said we are presenting a, a, a seminar on how to hear the voice of God, God's daughters were there. And the things that manifested out of that was, it, it was biblical. It was absolutely amazing. Then the second seminar we had, one man pitched, one. Shame, I felt so sorry for that guy. He was sitting in the middle of, I think, 200 ladies. And, and afterwards, this man was so confused. He, he, he didn't know which way to, to, to go. 
um, until we sat down with him again and, and, and went over it again. Amen? So, biblical knowledge, that's what I'm getting at, uh, that is not faith. Because he had the knowledge, but it didn't move him to go yes. and, amen. Then, let us have a look in the word of God, what is faith? Okay, Romans 10. Romans 10, um, verse 17. Consequently, faith comes by hearing the message. Amen. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. So faith is specific biblical knowledge coming to life. Amen? It is, it, the, 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 uh, there's a scripture in the word of God that says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Okay. I need biblical knowledge because we've said this to, to every teenager that we've ever had the privilege to minister to. You cannot, as a human being, Bring a question about life where the answer is not in the Word of God. doesn't matter what question it is. There's no question about life that you will not find the answer to that question in the Word of God. And, and, and I, I respectfully challenge anyone, anyone, think about any question about life and you will find the, the answer in the Word of God. Um, because the Lord has created His Word in such a way that it manifests what He wants it to manifest. Amen? Not what we want to, what He wants to. That's why I must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, because when I do that, everything the Lord leads me to do will be successful. Everything. That's why I said to Joshua, meditate on this Word day and night. And be careful... To do what it says. Not to speak. Not to think. Mm -hmm. Do it. Amen. 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 If the word of God says to do something, do it. Because then you will be prosperous and successful. So, um, faith is specific biblical knowledge that has come to life. The, the next one, Acts. Um, Acts 8. Acts 8, verse 30 to 38. This, this is a beautiful, wow. So Philip, one of the, the apostles of, of Jesus that started the, the New Testament church, he's, he's busy here. Philip ran um, up to, to a chariot and heard a man reading Isaiah the prophet. So because he's an evangelist, he's hearing this man and and. If you've got a little bit of uh, historical background, you'll know that this man reading out of the, the um, book of, of Isaiah um, is not someone that in those days was permitted to be in a temple. So it piqued his interest. He ran up to him and he said this to him. Um, Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can, uh, how can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture um, the, the eunuch was reading. Uh, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer in silence, so he did not open his mouth. In humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can uh, speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. So this is the piece in Isaiah where, where Isaiah is, is proclaiming Jesus to be the, the, the lamb for, for our, our sins. And then verse 34, the eunuch asked Peter, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture, listen, um, and told him the good news about Jesus. There is only one good news. That's Jesus. Outside of that, there is no good news. Amen? Amen. It's only Jesus that is good news. Now, it goes further. Verse 36. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Please listen with your spirit to this next scripture. 
What can stand in the way of me being baptized? That's a biblical question there. And there's a biblical answer. So the first thing is, faith is specific biblical knowledge that has come to, to, to life. And the second thing is, faith is an act of my will. I will do this because the Bible says so. Amen? Amen. And my will moves me to do what the Holy Spirit. I, I've got a will to say yes or no, yes. unfortunately. Amen? Amen. So, so my will can be a good thing for me or it can be a, a thing that will lead me one day into the pit of hell. Straight. Um, and here this eunuch says, I, I want to. He willed himself to want to listen to the gospel of Jesus and want to be baptized. And he was bold enough to say, there's water. What is stopping us? Yes. What? What's stopping us? And the question is, there simply is nothing. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon. Amen? If I am walking hand in hand with the Holy Spirit, listening to the Holy Spirit, doing what He, he uh, requests or shows or, or tells me to do, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen? And again, it's not arrogance, it's biblical confidence. Biblical confidence. I have yet to meet somebody that when my Savior Jesus is standing next to me can harm me. Amen? Or you. I have yet to meet that person or that nation or that army or that galaxy. They don't exist. Because Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. He rules and reigns. Amen? So, the next one, Hebrews 11. Thank you for, for sticking with, with me here. Hebrews 11 verse 1. This is the next thing that faith is. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That's the next thing that faith is. Assurance. Assurance. If I am sitting here this morning and someone can convince me that Jesus does not exist, I don't have faith. Amen? Amen. But if I'm sitting here this morning and there simply is nothing and no one that will be able to convince me that Jesus does not exist, that's assurance. That's faith. Even though I cannot physically see him, I know my Christ lives. I know. I speak to him every day. He speaks to me. He tells me what to do. I listen. So I know. So faith is assurance. Assurance. Amen. I am 100% assured that that is my wife. No one will convince me otherwise. Amen. Nobody. Just like. I am assured that Jesus is the Son of God and He lives. Amen. So faith is assurance. The next uh, scripture is in Philippians. Um, this is a beautiful one. This is a powerful one. Philippians 3. Wow. Philippians 3 from verse 13. Listen what the Lord says here. Brothers and sisters... I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which Jesus has called me heaven in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The next thing that faith is, is determination. I will press on. I will push through. It doesn't matter who says what. I listen to my king. That's it. I reject anything outside of the word of God because it doesn't make Jesus Christ kingdom sense. Amen? Amen. So to press on, determination, determination, to stand and to say, Lord, whether I live for another two months or whether I live for another 50 years, I am determined that nobody 
will take me off of this path that you have put me on. I am determined to seek you every day, even though sometimes when I pray, it seems as if you're not hearing me. And it seems as if you're not close to me. I am determined to push through and to press through. I will not be shaken and swayed and wavered by, by humans and human opinions. I won't. I will stick to you. Determination. Amen? Amen. When Jesus came to earth, he was determined to get souls into his kingdom. Amen. And nobody could stop him. Amen? Amen? Then, the last thing that we can have a look at, there, there's still many more, but the last thing that we can look at today, um, Philippians, you just turn the page, um, back Philippians 1, verse 25. Uh, just get it here. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith. That's the next thing that faith is, is joy. Do you know that joy cannot be bought by money? Yes. Happiness can. Yes, yes. Happiness can be bought. I can buy a new car today. Oh, and I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. Um, and, and, until my one-year-old boy goes and, and washes the, the side of the car with rocks. <laughs> then I'm not happy anymore. <laughs> Amen? So happiness can be bought, but joy comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joy comes from the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And, and I have joy when I see God's um, um, word manifest. I have joy when I see God's people draw closer to him. I have joy when I see um, God's people worship him because he is worthy to be worshipped and not because they have to. Amen? So we have, that is another thing that faith is. And, and, and for, for those who have gone through, through the book of John, the book of John is very personal to me because John concentrates on people. And he shows the, the different types of relationships that Jesus had with, with people. And I can only imagine sitting at night with Jesus around a campfire, waiting to, to go into the next town the, the, the next morning, the joy that those disciples had. The absolute biblical joy of Jesus just teaching them. And, and when they get that revelation, when that light bulb goes on, it's oh man, joy. Joy. Not happiness, but joy. Amen. Then... Um, to recap everything. So faith is not, this is one thing that faith isn't, is tradition. Faith isn't tradition. Faith isn't, isn't because my, my parents did it, I'm going to do it, and, and I'm going to teach my children to do it, and, and no, no. If they, in, in my parents' days, if they were born again, blood washed, Holy Spirit filled, they would serve and worship the Lord Total different way to what I'm doing today. Because Jesus, going through the word of God, you will see that helps us adapt with the change of time. Amen? So the disciples didn't worship the same way we are worshiping. But the, the, the Lord, so tradition falls away completely when we have faith. So the first thing is faith um, is not tradition. Faith isn't information. I can memorize this word from cover to cover. I still won't have the faith to heal someone. I still won't have the faith to speak in tongues. I still won't have the faith to, to go and preach to, to people that the Lord sends me to, to preach to. So vast amounts of information doesn't give me faith. Amen. Then the next one is habit. Habit. Okay. If I, if I go to church every Sunday, I'll, I'll, I'll have faith. I don't have to do anything else. It's, it, it's a habit that's in my life. Um, some people, when they go to, to sleep at night, they open the Bible at Psalms 23. They don't read it, they just open it. Habit. Why? Because they saw grandmom do it. They don't know why they're doing it, but they did it. Okay. You, know, you know how dangerous habit is, or tradition? We heard a story once of, of a, a, a lady um, that was cooking uh, Sunday lunch, and she had a roast. Okay? <laughs> We've heard this one, is it? Okay. And, and she used to cut a portion of the roast off 
before she put it in the pot. It, it would fit in the pot, but she, she, she did that. And someone asked her, why are you doing that? Um, because the whole thing will fit in the... And she said, because my grandmom used to do it. But her grandmom used to do it because the roast was too big for that pot that she used. <laughs> so she didn't know why she did it, but she just did it. Amen? Tradition and habit can be very dangerous. And we must steer away from, from, from that. Then the next thing, um, faith is not only doing good works. I know a lot of atheists that are doing good yes, works. I know a lot of atheists that are even giving tithes to churches. Yes. Why? They don't believe in God, but they have seen a biblical principle manifest in God's kingdom. So they know that if I adhere to that principle, I'm going to get richer. So they tithe. They never step into the church. They internet bank it. And, and, and according to God's word, they are blessed, but they only receive their blessing here on earth. Amen. They won't receive it afterwards. Amen? Sure. So then we're going to end with this and say what faith is. Faith is the word of Jesus Christ coming alive. The word of Jesus coming alive. We've said it over and over and over again. Sitting here this morning, you might be the only Bible that somebody in Altham reads tomorrow. Yes, amen. The only Bible. They've never, they've never opened this book. They never get into a church ever. But the way that, that we manifest through our deeds, the word of God, you might be the only Bible that that person will ever read. Or has ever read. The next thing is um, belief as true and biblical deeds. Okay. So if I believe in Jesus and I have faith, my biblical deeds will manifest. Does that make sense? Okay. So I cannot, I cannot proclaim to know Jesus, but my deeds are completely on the other side. Then there's no faith there. Um, and then the very last one, um, experience, this, this is something that, um, that, that we pick up as we walk together, experience in the kingdom of God. We must gain as much experience as possible in God's kingdom, not in the world. Okay. We can use knowledge that we've gained there to bring back into, into the kingdom. By, by saying that, I, what I mean is, there's a lot of men sitting here that have got technical knowledge that you learned in the world. Yes. Amen? Yes. But you can bring it into God's kingdom when we need to, to, to build our church bigger one of these days. Amen? Or, or, or when, we, when we need to, someone, someone was speaking about a, a, a float that, that we need to make one of these days. Yeah. You take that knowledge. So experience in God's kingdom. Spend as much time as you can in God's kingdom, with God's people, in God's word. Amen? So that is why it, it is, it's critical for us as sons and daughters in God that, that when the, the lockdown was over, um, a lot of people said to me, okay, Jacques, so now you can stop with the devotions. Nope. My God said no. He said, I must carry on. The more we are drenched in the word, the more our carnal minds will disappear. Amen? Amen? Because then the more the word of God will make sense to us. Because if I have knowledge of the word of God, if I am constantly drenched in the word of God, day and night, reading it, meditating on it, taking a scripture to work and, 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 and having that scripture flow through my mind. When something happens at work or after work, that scripture will help me. Amen. The Holy Spirit knows Amen. what he's doing. Amen? Amen. So that scripture you read that day will manifest and, and, and will help you in that situation. If, if I do not drench myself in the word of God, I'm going to be lost. Yes. Then I'm going to fall around with philosophies and, yes. and, and, and all sorts of worldly teaching. What, what did Oprah say on the 15th of, of, of January? I, I can't. And, and, and we grab to stuff like that. Amen? So to become a successful body of, of Christ in this town, uh, sons and daughters of, of God, we need to eat the word of God day and night. Amen. Amen. Day and night, day and night, day and night. Again, I've always said this, I, I, am not, I am not and I have never said to anyone, we must go out here and make a, a spectacle of ourselves. Yes. 
you know, stand on the street corner with the Bible and read it out loud. I'm not saying that. Um, we can, on our way to work in, in our car, have an audio Bible um, at home. Play that audio Bible day and night. Day and night, day and night. The, the Lord has made our, our brains perfect. We receive information even when we sleep. So playing the word of God over and over and over and over and over again, when you need that scripture, the Holy Spirit already knows it's, it's locked. It's here, and he just releases it. Amen? Amen? So brothers and sisters, can I please ask our uh, sound engineers just to play a, a, a calm song for us, please, to, to come.